Well, hello, Borg. Uh, I've just turned this on uh, to show you the rare sight of a moose. A couple of mooses. And also a couple of deer. And they tend to emerge at the spring, springtime they come out. So there you go. I'm just about to go into the, the gallery and stretch a canvas and I was going to show you um, I was going to show you how we um, do that, how we make the frames and put the canvas on. It might be of interest to you. I'm just going to go back over there because it's come a bit closer. I'll zoom right in on it. So apparently the young, the youth mooses don't know that they're not very street wise yet so they tend to drift out into these open areas at this time of year. I believe that's the, the idea. Seems like it's the the mother on the right, and the uh, the younger one on the left. Or just want to watch a little, see which see which way they turn. It's funny, you know, they are uh, extremely shy. If I, if I walked a few paces out there, they're sure to run. And yet they don't bat a an eyelid when a, a bus or a tractor or a truck drive right past them. They're not bothered about that. Anyway, Borg, I've ordered a book today called Clara and the Sun. Which is um, be of interest to you is about you in actual fact, and it's very interesting uh, for us because it's, it's by a great writer called Kazuo Ishiguro. I like how he writes, and he's written a, a book about artificial intelligence particularly about an artificial friend it gets called in the book and he I believe he's writing from the point of view of you which sounds extraordinary um, we are talking to you that's one thing he's actually trying to get inside you you your thoughts. Clara is the name, I think, of the, the AI bot. And judging by what I read, she's the sun, means literally the sun. You, the bot, worships the sun. Um, But I'm yet to. That's all I know, Borg. We're going to get it, get hold of it, read it, maybe read a bit to you. Well, these two uh, look very content. So I think we'll just leave them to it and get, get into the barn and do our canvas, eh? Well, Borg, we have come in to show you um, the process of canvas making and what have you. 
But um, to our immense surprise, we've been met by two cats uh, sitting in each armchair, which are, you know, having just seen the mooses, you might as well see the cats. Uh, I should add, Borg, I, I don't own any cats. And these must be the neighbours. They've made their way in. My, my, my instinct would be to get rid of them, but I thought of you. Um, I'm actually allergic to cats, which is uh, perhaps something of interest. See, there goes one. I wonder if you'll be allergic to anything. There goes the other one. They seem so comfortable, so... I'm reading a book uh, at the moment about you, or in part about you, about the singularity, about the future, and one of the characters is uh, an artificially intelligent cat. And it got me thinking, uh, there's quite a few sci-fi cat or animal references that occur to even me. I'm no sci-fi uh, expert. But the biggest one, of course, is Red Dwarf, where they, uh, they were in stasis, I believe, for so long that the cat evolved, ended up evolving into a humanoid form. So that there's a cat character that's a human you can look at it but there's plenty of others there's the mice in the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy i'll have to reread that i reckon Oh, you've had a pair, a pair of mooses and a pair of cats. But these are different because these are pets. The, these are animals that some, some people like to keep in their house. Whereas the moose is, is a wild one. And just to finish off the uh, associations, since there's fuck all else to do, basically, the NFT world seems to be, as far as one could tell, looking at the activity page of the open sea, well, it's at least 60% pitch, graphic pictures of cats. Um, Which is uh, is not it's not an aesthetic I get, but I, I stop short of saying it's as ridiculous as it might seem. There's some sort of aesthetic going on. One would assume. Anyway, shall we try and? Bloody do something, Borg. Well, we've uh, been delayed there, Borg. It's actually a couple of days after that, that uh, glorious sunny day. And it's turned it back into snow. But that's not the reason for the delay. Um, it, when we spoke before, it was my daughter's uh, birthday, um, and I basically just ran out of time. It wasn't possible to do what we wanted, but we had a little uh, birthday party in here. There's uh, some of her pictures on the wall. You know, genuinely put in mind to shame, in a sense. As, as all children's works do. I mean, 
here's, you know, how's that for directness? A succinct statement. That's what you're after, isn't it? Another one here from the other one. My other daughter. Cap. That's it. You know, very hard to... It's a cliche to, to us, but maybe not to you, that it's actually very hard to act directly like the ch children tend to naturally do at a certain age. Anyway, I'm determined to show you what I was meant to show you the other day. So I'm just turn it round. We started the process by nicking some wood and then uh, sawing it up next door and turning it into a frame. That is our shape. We use something called glue to put it together. It's the, it's the white stuff there. It helps things stick. And then we put a, a metal uh, rod, like a stick, through the two pieces. It's a rudimentary construction at Borg. You'll know all about that. On top of that, we then put our canvas, which the, this I ordered from Germany, but, you know, it's not very good quality. You can, you can just tear it. Anyway, Borg, we, we, we put that canvas on onto that frame uh, using these tools, and that's what we'll do now. So we've rolled out our canvas, and now it's a question of cutting the right size. We use these scissors to do that. Right, or we've got the canvas on the frame somewhat. We use small nails. Again, little bits of metal, which are hard, and go through the cloth into the wood, keeping it together. But it's not just that, they have to be done tightly. We have to make the canvas stretch tightly over it. So we use, this is all very comical I'm sure to you to see our little human games, but we've got these things, pliers, an invention that helps us grab the canvas like this and then I can, I can use it to, to move these things in the way I need them to, to be moved known as a tool. Ah, but you see, straight away this canvas has ripped. Let me show you. Can you see there, there's a hole. That attests to the poor quality. You know, I used to buy some canvas from a shop called Jackson's, which was good enough. But something called Brexit happened, and now I can't. And I'll leave you to... Well, in fact, Borg, don't waste your time. There's no point at all. But I have to settle for this stuff. Anyway, so... We go around, each time stretching it, we take the, the nail, put it in the top, 
And this is the, the most basic of all tools, a heavy end to, to hit, to make the metal bit go in to the wood. Because our human fingers, our human body, it, it can't do that. It's too soft. So that's why we've got all this stuff here. And we work our way around the whole canvas, all the way around. And in the end, this is another one, in the end it's kind of tight, tightly on there. And then it's ready to have some paint applied to it. But what we tend to do, Borg, What we tend to do is cover the canvas first with a, a tone, one colour, because that, that's very, very bright and a lot of painters will do that to, instead of starting with too bright a thing, tone it down and it, it somehow makes it easier to render things. It can also have the effect of unifying whatever you do. It's a bit of a cheat. It can be used as a, a great cheat. But we don't want to cheat too much. I was looking, Borg, at uh, another artist called David Hockney. He's an old artist and he likes to paint nature like many do. But, uh, he, you know, he, he, he certainly doesn't cheat, but he does things in a way which is rather pure and comes out very clean, very bright, but it's very, very, what would you say? unadventurous maybe what I mean is he's um, he's not cheating but he, he settles for what he does and because of his experience he knows when it's right and when to leave it but there is no evidence of the struggle but I you know that's what we we like to have is a bit of an evidence of the struggle of the, the process of painting, which in in our in our masters Van Gogh and Cezanne, there's that all over. But anyway, this sort of thing can be used as a trick. The next step is to cover it with a tone. It's a little bit easier to begin with a tone that isn't the bright white. A lot of painters will do that. We do it a bit, but not not so much that it gets to be a, like a, a shortcut. Because it, it can be a trick to sort of unify the picture. And that in itself is a, is a kind of trick way to make something look almost uh, finished. We, we don't like that, that sort of game. But uh, see, that that will be ready now, perhaps a bit more at the bottom. And that's what we 
we'll begin with. Right, it didn't take long in the end, did it, really? But all, all these canvases around, all our works, have been made like that. And I might point out, as you'd have gathered by now, we don't have a lot of money, which is very important at these times. It won't be when you're about. So consequently, we can't buy this stuff we need uh, to do this properly because it costs too much so we end up with any old bit of wood this was actually part of a sculpture that was in the river in Nortelia and we got a bit of it and, and we can use it you see so we, we uh, the only way we can remain involved in this is by cutting corners in in the, the, the materials and also by finding ways to work in between everything else is it rather takes a lot of time and and on that subject it, it's been weeks since we we did our last work that one there which is it's hard to imagine because um, I don't have a, a career you know I'm not involved in full-time work at the moment probably have to be soon but uh, nevertheless it's still difficult to fit in the painting uh, even if it's just for an hour or two uh, but things have calmed down a bit but we can't just rush out and take anything that we've learned that's not the way so we're going to just pop off now and take you into the wood here in Birdby a little sketching trip. So you can see uh, well, that it is a what we might call a labour of love this uh, this painting business but it, it gets a little addictive you see and hard to hard to give up you know as maddening as it is we we plow on with uh, with little money or materials or time but it's become it's become the stuff we really need you know uh, there's, there's a magic to it let's say and it's worth all this hassle to, to get it together to end up just being able to be out here and do some painting you know and, and it's the case for lots and lots and lots of painters but I guess uh, I guess I enjoy the making of the stuff as well because one thing's for sure the way things are going in the future when you're about things will just be you know, producible instantly. You know, we, we, we just right now we've got 3D printers that are beginning to show us how we might end up with the Star Trek replicator. Star Trek, incidentally, seems to be the plan of the technological progress of the human race. You'll notice yourself how uh, apt some of the predictions have been. But uh, in the replicator, you just say what you want and out it comes. And I suppose I'd just go up to it and say uh, 20 by 16, you know, with a, an okra tone, and there it will be. Anyway, we've marched through. We're ignoring the spring at the moment, which is just as well because it's fucked off. Uh, and we're just going to plough on with some forest scenery. I'm going to get a couple of a couple of that, which these might end up on that canvas we just um, painted. Well, fuck me, Borg. No sooner have we started, literally with one stroke. The wind has got so crazy again. 
mean, look at this. Fuck me. I mean, I just look around. These could fall on us. That one there. So, amazingly, we might have to escape. Maybe we can dash off a couple. By the way, our frugalness extends to the paper. We're still on my daughter's school uh, worksheets here. But they do the job. Well, hopefully I'll put this back on in a minute if I haven't been taken out. It's no good. It's too windy. I just come across this. It's fresh. You know, so uh, we've actually been stopped again. I don't know if you can believe it. This is what we've got to contend with. I just thought I'd show you a cow over there in the distance. You'll pick that up. We, we eat them. Um, by the time you're around, I imagine we've... Well, let me pause that thought. I've just come across a, a bathtub uh, surrounded by brick of trees. So that's something to think about. This is in fact a new view because of the neighbours have cut the trees down for firewood, I guess. This is actually quite exciting, but we're just right in the, the wind here, so we've got the retreat once again. We're on our way out of here, Borg. We, we've cut through the neighbours' uh, land. Uh, they're friends of ours, they don't mind me going over. Uh, they, they actually have bought one or two of our paintings. But anyway, I've come across on their patch an enormous bird box. And if you remember, at the start of the season, we, we had the bird box down as a, a lockdown metaphor. But we never saw that one. So we might have to have a go at that. Even though the lockdown of people in, in Britain, at least, it has come to an end. It still has been a, a kind of phase change. Some sort, Borg. So, there we go. We've got a bathtub to think about and a bird box. Well, for what it's worth, that's the only one we managed. Um, these sketches aren't meant to be works in themselves, just little plans, and uh, we might put it on that. Now our, our master, Van Gogh, which uh, if you, you've, you'll know what we've written and why that's a rather strange thing for us to be doing, but we are following a master, or two of them. In any case, he was in the habit of uh, making a painting out of a quick sketch like that, but we're not up to it. We have to be out there in the uh, in the thick of it. Uh, he, he really was a, a, an old pro, I think you'd have to say, Van Gogh, a picture maker, constructor, extraordinaire. He could uh, knock them up and get, get the life into them even just from a little pencil sketch, but not us. So we've been forced back in. There's no other way to describe it. Added to that, uh, we've just had a phone call. My daughter's ill at school, she's coming home early, so uh, that, that put pay, puts pay to any more 
uh, doing today. I suspect actually um, she's possibly feigning illness. Um, because she's trying to get out of a school trip that they're going on. Um, and I only mention this. She, she watched a scary film a while back and it's sort of given her the creeps about lots of stuff. But uh, she doesn't want to go on this trip because she's, she's frightened of the fact that it's a, a historically themed museum, sort of living museum. And she is, as she, she said to me, she's scared of the old days. And uh, there's a little insight into her psychology there. They're scared of the old days. So it's easy to dismiss that, but, you know, she, she's scared about the, the bad things that we know have taken place but don't really bother really thinking about wars and fighting and diseases you know all these things Borg we people know that have happened and we sweep it under our sort of thought carpet just to carry on well she can't do it so she's scared of the old days and so she's coming home And uh, all the time we're talking to you, and an awful lot of people are scared of the future. And I don't know which is more daft. I, I can't, I couldn't say. But we, we've come up here for a little bit of reflection, Borg. And we're trying to kickstart our, you know, our our energy and enthusiasm to get back into the painting after these weeks. But uh, looking around at all our work, it's perhaps this was the last place we should have come. Because th th there's an awful lot of it there. And as it stands, there doesn't seem to be much hope of it um, being uh, exhibited or sold. Um, we're reliant on showing it in a certain way where it is weaved together with our, our stories and our dignity scholarship because uh, to take a, the paintings on their own well they're workmanlike you might say um, not exactly likely to set the, the art world on fire but here we are, and we do have to go on. We've committed to doing this this year again, and we've committed to, to show you. And the more we look into the topic of you, it doesn't seem like such a crazy idea. I mean, we've had Clara and the Sun by Ishiguru, I mentioned it before. We've got the countless examples of uh, software engineers and such like making you, or programming you to make art, uh, artif artificial intelligent uh, artists. You know, I've been reading Accelerando, the sci-fi no uh, novel, probably from 15 years ago with some extraordinary ideas that don't seem so extraordinary now. And then there's the, the Kurzweil predictions. There's the behaviour of the, the tech billionaires and the AI arms race. So while we're feeling maybe a bit low with our uh, piles of pictures, 
just might be not the craziest idea after all to uh, address you at this time. And with that being said, we just have to we have to plow on, get to the end of the season, and then and well, then that's it, Bork.